the turning point. I don't know how it happened, but somehow I hit my own rock bottom. I was living in poverty and using credit cards and charity to pay all of my family's bills. I was always in fear of not coming up with enough money. I was emotionally and mentally exhausted from the life I was living. I was lonely, depressed, and I felt worthless. I think I would have committed suicide if I had felt that my kids would be well taken care of without me. I tried to imagine what their lives would be like without me, and despite my feelings of worthlessness, I knew I was still the best option they had. I felt like I had been failing them, but I knew that to give up and leave them alone would be the ultimate failure. I couldn't do that to them. Once you hit bottom, you only have a few choices. You can end it, stay there, or rise up. I chose to rise up. As the expression goes, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. There had to be more to life. It was imperative I find a way to increase my quality of life. I had to find a way to enjoy my life and my family again regardless of my past and my pain. No one was coming to save me from my life. It was up to me to become my own savior. I had made an acquaintance who helped me to accept that I was not stupid, broken, or incapable. This person mirrored me in a way, and my extreme fondness for someone I saw so much of myself in made me realize that perhaps I might be able to love myself. I just had to discover a way to find meaning and happiness in my life. I could not spend the rest of my life feeling this low and worthless. There had to be more, and I would find it, whatever it took. In a place of complete darkness, I committed myself to searching for some light. Things began to slowly turn around for me after I made the decision to take responsibility for my life. I had been so afraid that I couldn't take care of myself that I failed to take steps toward self-care. I still didn't realize that it was only my belief that I couldn't do it, coupled with my failure to act, that had made it true. All I knew for sure was that I couldn't live my life the way I had been anymore. Things had gotten so bad that I felt like I couldn't possibly make them worse for myself. So I stopped waiting for Prince Charming, God, my parents, or anyone else to save me. And I made the resolute decision that, come hell or high water, I would save myself. First, I made the decision to take the advice of my career counselor and apply for SSI. I could not find work that I was capable of doing in my current state. I had to accept and do what was necessary to secure some kind of income. Although giving up the idea of going back to work at that point was painful and scary, the prospect of a monthly check gave me hope for the future. I knew it would take a while to process, but that I would likely be approved for social security income due to my physical and mental health diagnosis. My lawyer had explained to me that I would get back payments from the time I had applied to the time I got approved. The back pay would be enough to pay off my debt, and then somehow I would use my bill juggling skills to make that small monthly paycheck enough to ensure I would never be in such a desperate financial state again. The next thing I did was commit to staying single for at least one year. I had never been alone, and this was a terrifying prospect to me. However, I realized that my relationships had given me nothing but drama, pain, and stress, and I needed a break. I decided to take the advice I had been given by the domestic violence shelter years ago and take a year to heal before considering being in another relationship. I felt so lost all the time and finally realized I had to find myself 
before I could find someone to love. I also made a commitment to regular self-care. I had neglected simple self-care activities for years. My basic hygiene, diet, exercise, and household chores had all suffered. I had used my pain, both physical and emotional, as an excuse for this neglect. I stopped telling myself that I couldn't do it and accepted that I had to take care of myself if I was going to be able to keep taking care of my kids. I started taking small tech steps every week to do better than the week before, slowly building a healthy self-care routine. I was already seeing a doctor regularly to manage my fibromyalgia symptoms. Most physical activities were still too painful and drained too much of my energy, but I could manage to stretch without too much difficulty. And I found that simple yoga poses felt good to me. I stopped spending my time curled up in the fetal position in bed, feeling sorry for myself and actively hating my body. My physical abilities were limited though, so I focused more on increasing my mental activity. I switched from using fiction novels to distract myself from my life to reading nonfiction books that were about ways to improve my life. Instead of immersing myself in television dramas and romantic comedies as an escape, I started watching documentaries about health and nutrition and learning how food and my lifestyle was affecting me. Then I put that information to use and started making healthier choices. I utilized my library's online learning program to take courses in Reiki, meditation, and spiritual coaching. The more I learned, the more empowered I felt. I was excited about learning new skills and ways to take care of myself. It felt good and I was grateful for all I was discovering. It seemed the more excited and grateful I became, the more opportunities kept coming to me. Each opportunity seemed to lead me to another. Looking back, it seems that first year after I made my commitment to myself was just a whirlwind of learning and growth. It was during this time that I first began to learn about the law of attraction and principles of manifesting. Although the information came to me and I understood and accepted it as truth, it was not a main focus in my daily life. One practice I took to right away was keeping a journal in which I would occasionally write events that I would like to have happen in the future as if they already had, visualizing them in my mind and cultivating gratitude for them. I would make an entry and then put the journal away somewhere until I thought of something else that I would like to manifest in the future. I always did this informally and seldom looked over at the journal between entries.